Well, hello fellow flight sim enthusiasts. I wanted to do a video today about VR. Uh, heard a lot of buzz about it, decided to pick one up. Got a uh, Oculus Rift. And uh, I have to say, it is all that. I see VR as uh, a game changer like Track IR was back in the day. Uh, even more so. Track IR was great. VR is something else altogether because I see VR becoming much more than just uh, a hobby, hobbyist uh, piece of tech. I see it actually being useful in flight training. And I'll tell you why I believe that. A couple of things happened when I got VR that really impressed me. Number one, uh, I like to fly DCS, uh, Digital Combat Simulation. I like the F-5. It's a very simple aircraft. Reminds me of the 727, which uh, I flew the 727 for seven years in the right seat. Also worked as flight engineer uh, for a year and a half. Have a lot of nostalgia for the airplane. It was a great airplane to fly. Still my favorite. Uh, in the left seat of the Airbus A320 now, but the 727 is still my favorite. A lot of pilots will say the same thing, too, if they ever flew it. But the F-5 is it reminds me a lot of that. Uh, 727, the classic, uh, kind of old school way of doing things, you know, uh, no MFDs, no stores management system, you just, uh, you know, if you want to arm a weapon, you arm that weapon with a switch on a pylon. Uh, much simpler, very fun to fly. Uh, my landings were awful in the F5 and DCS. Then I got VR, and the first time I landed the F5 with VR was just, just smoked it on, it was beautiful. And I realized right then, one thing that VR provides for you that you have in the real world is peripheral vision. Uh, it's not, you know, a full 180 degree field of view, but it's, it's close. Close enough to give you the peripheral vision cues that are critical for landing. Uh, they say that your peripheral vision is 100 times more sensitive to motion than the core of your vision. That's why a flight instructor will always tell you, when you're learning to fly, look down the runway. Don't look right in front of the nose, look down the runway. And that's because that allows your peripheral vision to pick up that sink rate that is very important to landing the aircraft. So that was impressive. Second thing was, in DCS, I decided to fly the Huey. Uh, I'm a fixed wing guy, so helicopter stuff is not easy. Uh, I went to Komodo Simulations, got a collective, because I thought, you know, I really want the real world kind of controllers uh, that you would have in a helicopter. Komodo Simulations makes great stuff. Uh, they do limited runs, get your name on the waiting list, they'll send you an email when they're ready to do some. Uh, and pick them up quickly because they sell out literally within a couple of days. Anyway, uh, so I'm learning the, the Huey, I'm spending a lot of time flying it, uh, finally getting to the point where I'm you know, pretty satisfied being able to put it where I want it and uh, stay out of the vortex ring state and all that stuff. And then I went back to work flying my fixed wing Airbus. And I was sharper, tighter, more precise in my flying. And I did not expect that. Uh, so it's really interesting how real world skills can be maintained and even sharpened and honed in VR. And that's why I see it becoming a very valuable training device. It will never replace a full motion, you know, full on, full fidelity simulator, and it, sh it should not. But I see it uh, having a place in flight, flight training, especially uh, for younger students who are learning to fly. Uh, you can spend a lot less time and a lot less money developing those skills in VR and uh, then transferring them to the real aircraft. So I see a, a lot of benefit there. Now, the next concept, or the next thought, for our hobby anyway, cockpit building. I built an F-16, it was a very fun project, I still have it. Was intending to build a 727 cockpit, have collected a lot of stuff for that, uh, and may still do it, but in VR, you've got some real benefits. Number one, you can do it in a very small space. Number two, it's much less expensive. Number three, if you don't have skills, electronic skills, computer skills, uh, you know, interfacing, uh, and, 
you know, skills of building, you know, things, uh, you know, wood, plastic, metal skills, and stuff like that. Um, VR is fantastic. Matter of fact, VR is just, just, just all the way around. It's, it's amazing. You build a cockpit, that is the airplane that it's good for. Build a 737 cockpit, that's all you're flying. Uh, build an F-16, that's what you're flying. With VR, I can fly anything. I've got controllers here uh, for helicopters, uh, various fighter aircraft. I got my Ace 737 full column yoke here, which is essentially the same thing we had in the 727. Um, and I use it for my 727 simulator. I got my SciTech throttle quadrants here and my Flight Sim PM UK 747 throttles, which I'm using only one, two, and three because 727 is a tri-jet. Non-functional uh, reverse levers, but I just pull them up pull them back into the reverse detent like that and then when I'm ready to come out of reverse push them forward and go like that. Uh, not exactly like the real thing but eh, close enough. The Fly J Sim 727 version 3 is fantastic. Uh, if you like the 727 I highly recommend it. Well worth uh, the money for X-Plane by the way. Um, so you know smaller space much less expensive Less, you know, you don't have to spend the time building if that's an issue for you. And you can fly any airplane you want. When I look out the window, and I move all the way forward and look down the window, I don't see the frame of the monitor. Or if I look up, I don't see the ceiling of the room I'm in. I, I see the sky. I see, you know, the wingtip uh, in VR. That's fantastic. Uh, but uh, I, I kind of like the, the mix uh, of having real hardware to put my hands on and having VR. Uh, the Hapto glove I'm looking forward to. I think that would be great to take the place of these controllers here. So you can just put a glove on and begin to interface with your VR, your virtual cockpit. Um, but the pure VR cockpit, it does not appeal to me. Maybe it does for some. Maybe you, know, you just want to set up a couple of sensors and have a completely clear room with sensors in a chair and use the uh, uh, hand controllers to latch onto the virtual throttle and stick and, th and yoke and whatnot. Yeah, that's great. I really like having a hardware controller to put my hands on. Anyway, so that's uh, just my thoughts on VR and cockpit building, uh, the direction our hobby is going, and how this is beginning to be a viable technology for real-world flight training. Let me know what you think. Uh, you going to still build cockpits? Uh, those of you who like to build cockpits out there, I may still. Um, you going to go pure VR? Uh, or are you going to have a kind of a hybrid setup like I have here with some a couple of hand controllers, a couple of real hardware controllers, uh, and then the rest VR? Uh, whatever your preference is, if you haven't tried VR and you're a flight simmer, you need to try it. It is the most amazing immersion technology for our hobby that has ever happened, uh, in my opinion. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. And, uh, well, keep the blue side up. We'll see you in the virtual skies. Have a good one.